Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Blessed Frederick Ozenam Parish on this third Sunday of Easter. A warm welcome to all, and especially to any new parishioners or visitors, as we gather today as one family around the table of the Lord for our Eucharistic celebration. We wish to gratefully acknowledge and thank all of our dedicated volunteers, without whom this Mass and the live streaming of this Mass would not be possible. Please rise. Mass is being offered for the repose of the souls of Magno Nasino, of, Ma of Maria Chan, and of Belen, sorry, Belen Badilio Rodriguez. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our celebration on this, the third Sunday of Easter. A special welcome to those who may be visiting or here for the first time, and a special welcome to those who are joining us virtually and in spirit through the live stream. Before we begin our celebration, let us pause for a moment of silence, call to mind our sins, and ask for the Lord's pardon and mercy. By your most sacred passion, you have redeemed our suffering. Lord, have mercy. By your most holy death, you have destroyed our death. Christ, have mercy. By your most glorious resurrection, you have transformed our life. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. May your people exalt forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope 
to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. At the temple gate, Peter addressed the people, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the holy and righteous one and asked to, asked to have a murderer given to you and you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And now, brothers and sisters, I ask that you acted in ignorance, as did, your, as, did, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that is, Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm. Let the light of your face shine on us, O Lord. Answer me when I call, O God of my right. You gave me room when I was in distress. Be gracious to me and hear my prayer. The light of your God shine on us, O Lord. But know that the Lord has set apart the faithful for himself. The Lord hears when I call to him. Response. Light of your face, shine on us, O Lord. There are many who say, Oh, that we might see some good. Let the light of your face shine on us, O Lord. Light of your face, shine on us, O Lord. I will both lie down and sleep in peace. For you alone, O Lord, make me lie down in safety. The light on your face shine down, O Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. John. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Now by this, we may be sure that we know him if we obey his commandments. Whoever says, I have come to know him, but does not obey his commandments, is a liar. And in such, a person in the truth does not exist. But whoever obeys his word, Truly, th in this person, the love of God has reached perfection. By this, we may be sure that we are in him. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The two disciples told the eleven and their companions what had happened on the road to Emmaus and how Jesus had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. 
While they were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you, as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wandering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. One of the things I often preach about is how present Jesus is in the Eucharist, but I have rarely, if ever, preached on how present Jesus is in the scriptures as well. Of course, our Lord is not present to the same degree in the scriptures as he is in the Eucharist, but he is very much present in the scriptures nonetheless. In fact, when the scriptures are proclaimed at Mass, that is almost the equivalent of Christ himself speaking directly to us. And yet, despite the, and yet, despite its importance to our faith, knowledge of the scriptures is something that we as Catholics, myself included, tend to neglect. And this is a problem because, as St. Jerome once said, ignorance of the scriptures is ignorance of Christ. And as our Lord reminded us in today's gospel, the scriptures are very much about him and his saving mission, that even much of the Old Testament centers around him. And so it's an important aspect of our faith to really get familiar with the scriptures, to take the time to read them on our own and to reflect on them, to allow their words and their meaning to penetrate our minds and hearts, and to participate in the study of scripture whenever we can. Not only because the scriptures will bring us closer to Christ, but because the scriptures contain a wealth of meaning, insight, and understanding as to the true nature of God and his will for the human community, revealing to us what it means to be human and how God wants us to live our lives. For as someone recently said to me jokingly, the word Bible itself is an acronym for basic instructions before leaving earth. And as I often tell the confirmation students, think of the Bible as, fundamental and essential, as a fundamental and essential instruction on how, on how to live your best life, on how to become the best version of yourself, and on how to achieve the greatest satisfaction possible in this life. But before delving deeper into the scriptures and getting more familiar with them, there are four important things to keep in mind, things that we as Catholics should know about the scriptures and should consider whenever reading or studying the Bible. The first thing is that for Catholics, we believe that divine revelation or supernatural revelation comes from two sources. These two sources being scripture and tradition. This is extremely important to understand because this is one of the main things that separates us from our Protestant sisters and brothers. Most Protestant denominations adhere to something called sola scriptura, meaning that they consider scripture the only valid source of divine revelation. As Catholics, we don't agree with that. We say that both scripture and tradition are equal sources of divine revelation, that they are, in fact, two sides of the same coin. 
tradition being the work of the Holy Spirit among God's people throughout the centuries. In other words, tradition is everything that the Holy Spirit has inspired the people of God throughout the centuries to believe, to teach, and to practice. As Catholics, we believe that this is an equal source of divine revelation as scripture. And so although many Christians deny the role of tradition, for us as Catholics, we put it on the same level as the Bible. The main reason we believe this is because the Bible didn't just fall from the sky. The Bible, in fact, came out, came out of tradition. In other words, the Bible came out of people's lived experience of God throughout history. As people throughout the centuries experienced God acting in human history and then wrote about these experiences and the meaning of these experiences. A good example of this is when Paul the Apostle was writing different letters to different communities. When he did so, the Apostle didn't know he was writing parts of the Bible. Even though we now believe that every word he wrote was inspired by the Holy Spirit, Paul himself didn't know he was writing what would later become part of Scripture. He was simply writing various letters based on his own experience and own understanding of God to address certain situations in the early church. It wasn't until much later that the church said that his letters were inspired by the Holy Spirit and should be part of what we now know as scripture. In fact, the Bible as we know it today wasn't finalized until the fourth century. Before that, there were all sorts of different gospels floating around, all sorts of different New Testament writings until the church came together and decided which ones were canon and which ones should constitute what we know today as the New Testament. And this is another example of how scripture came out of tradition. For it was, for it was the Holy Spirit working through, tradi through tradition, working through the belief and practice of God's people to decide which books of the Bible and which writings of the early church were divinely inspired and represented accurately the truth of the Christian message. Another good reason we put scripture and tradition on the same level is because the Bible as we know it today existed first as oral tradition before it became written tradition. That is oral tradition that evolved over time as the community of believers passed on their stories of God and the meaning of these stories orally first before they were written down. And yet, uh, and yet, under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, the truth and integrity of these stories remained intact throughout the centuries. In other words, the Holy Spirit inspired and guided the oral tradition of believers until that oral tradition became written tradition. We see this clearly because even though there are many human authors that are responsible for the Bible as we know it today, there are amazing parallels, overriding themes, and a remarkable continuity throughout the scriptures as if written by a single author. The second thing to understand about the scriptures is that they consist of different forms of literature, an anthology of history, allegory, poetry, prose, proverbs, prayers, philosophy, and theology, as well as all kinds of stories. Some of the stories being allegorical, some historical, and some a mixture of both. For example, the book of Revelation is clearly allegorical. The book of Genesis is clearly a mixture of both allegory and history. And the Gospels are clearly historical. But despite the different forms of literature, all of scripture is 100% truthful, meaning that it is 100% accurate in terms of what it reveals about the nature of God, the nature of man, the meaning of our existence, and what we need to know for eternal salvation. In other words, as Catholic Christians, we believe that the Bible is without error, that even though it was written by human beings, every word of it was inspired by the Holy Spirit. The third thing to understand about the scriptures is that they represent God speaking to the human community, but in human language and in the context 
of human culture. This is perhaps the most important thing to understand about the Bible, as a lack of, as a lack of understanding about this can lead to a lot of confusion. Because the truth is that human language is very limited. And because of this, it is very difficult to capture all of who God is, all of who God is in human language. It would be like ants trying to explain human beings to each other in the limited way that ants communicate. A good movie example of this is one of my favorites from the 90s, a movie I've talked about before, a movie called Contact. In this film about human beings making contact with extraterrestrial tr life, the aliens reach out to the human community using our own language and our own cultural references and images in order to communicate to us. Simply because if they tried to communicate to us in their own language, we wouldn't be able to understand them. And so the Bible often uses simplistic language as well as culturally specific ideas and concepts to try and convey the immensity of who God is. This is why a lot of the violent stories and imagery in the Old Testament can be off-putting if we don't understand the cultural context in which they were written. Because many of these violent stories came from a time when the mindset of many nations was very militaristic. So the Israelites understood God in very militaristic terms because that was the culture and the political climate at the time which is why the Jewish people often spoke and wrote about God being a great warrior who defends Israel against her enemies. Now, today, we understand that the true and more spiritual meaning of those stories and those images is that God is a spiritual warrior, a fierce defender of our souls from the evils of temptation and the evils of sin and selfishness. Another example of how the scriptures use very culturally specific language and concepts are some of the harsh sayings and parables of Jesus, which often reflect how the Jewish people communicated at the time. Sayings like this one, whoever does not hate father and mother is not worthy of me. This saying, of course, sounds very harsh to our modern day sensibilities, but would not have sounded quite as harsh and shocking to the people of Jesus' time and place. For this is how they communicated at that time. To say that they hated one thing over the other is to say that they preferred one thing over the other. If Jesus had been born in our time, he would use references that are more in tune with our own cultural sensitivities. Which is one of the main reasons we shouldn't try to interpret difficult passages in the Bible on our own because without the proper understanding of the cultural context, it's easy, to derive to a com it's easy to derive a complete misunderstanding of the passage. And finally, one of the most important things to understand about the Bible is that it, is that it contains historical, theological, and anthropological truth, but not necessarily scientific truth. This is often a bone of contention for many. That is, because the Bible is written, written in unscientific, sometimes unsophisticated language, it is often dismissed as mytho mythological in nature and in origin. But as I've often said before, both science and religion are intended by God to complement each other, not to dismiss each other that the insights offered by both disciplines give us a fuller understanding of the universe and of God's creation. Science answers the how questions while religion answers the who and the why questions. For example, science tells us how the universe was created while the Bible tells us who and why the universe, who created the universe and why. This distinction is important to understand because often people will read the Bible expecting to find scientific knowledge, and then being disappointed when they don't, and then using that disappointment as a reason to dismiss the Bible as a valid and valuable source of knowledge. But when we do that, we deprive ourselves of a wealth of knowledge, understanding, and insight into the true nature of God and of what it means to be human. 
And more importantly, when we do that, when we dismiss the scriptures as a valid source of knowledge and insight, we deprive ourselves of, the, of one of the most powerful and most beautiful ways that Christ is present to us and that Christ speaks to us through the holy word of God. Amen. Now let us stand and profess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. With faith in the risen Lord, we place our needs and petitions before our Heavenly Father as we pray, loving God, hear our prayer. that the church, as the body of Christ, may continue to proclaim the truth and joy of the resurrection faithfully and courageously. We pray, uh, hear our prayer, that the light of Christ will bring peace and compassion to our world. We pray, uh, hear our for the grace of forgiveness, that we will be open to God's free and generous offer of mercy and strive to forgive others as we have been forgiven. We pray, for a greater understanding of the scriptures, that together we may listen with attention, read with comprehension, and study with true insight into the saving ways of God, we pray. For our parish of Blessed Frederick Ozenham, that our community will continue to grow and thrive, both spiritually and physically, bringing to fruition our mission to build our new church in which to offer glory and praise to God, we pray. For the sick, the abused, and the abandoned, that the Lord may look upon them with tenderness and shed his healing light of grace upon them. We pray. For all who have died, that they may come to share in the eternal glory of the Father. We pray. Most merciful Father, reveal to us your saving power and preserve us always in your grace as we continue to place our trust in you. We entrust all our needs and attentions to you through our Blessed Mother as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners. Thank you. 
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O oh Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church. And as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifices of old to fulfillment in the reality of the cross, and by commending himself to you for our salvation, showed himself the priest, the altar, and the Lamb of Sacrifice. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And, if even the, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. created rightly gives you praise for through your son our lord jesus christ by the power and the working of the holy spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name Therefore, O oh Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy, make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness 
of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with, the bless, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with blessed Frederick Ozenam, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Francis, our Bishop, his assistant bishops, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you in your compassion, O merciful Father. Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world to our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O oh God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. <laughs> And now, at the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
this week's announcements. Our next Edge Night is a week from today, Saturday, April 20th at 7 p.m. here at the high school. For more information, please see the parish bulletin. Uh, it's, once again, it's for grades five, six, seven, and eight. So you're all, if you're in those grades, you're welcome to come out. Uh, if you don't register ahead of time, you can register that night. So come out for a night of faith, fun, fellowship, friendship, and free food. Uh, the Knights of Columbus will be accepting donations this weekend in, in exchange for lapel roses to help cover the cost of their annual, their annual March for Life bus trip. So we thank you in advance for your generous support of this very worthy cause. The Knights are also organizing a retreat for both men and women at the Manresa Jesuit Center in Pickering on Friday, April 26th. They have a few spots left, so if you're interested and would like more information, please see one of the Knights in the foyer after Mass. They'll be the ones handing out the lapel roses that I mentioned. Uh, our tra we're uh, resuming the traveling chalice, so see that little gray, uh, sorry, that little uh, brown wooden box there in front of the, right beside the altar. Uh, the traveling chalice is an initiative of the Sarah Club, uh, which is meant to cultivate an awareness of the need to pray for vocations. So we're starting up that ministry again. Uh, we take a break during really busy times, but we're starting up again now that we're through Holy Week. Uh, if you're interested in being part of this ministry, so the idea is you bring it home and you pray for vocations during the week that you have it. Um, and everything is set before you there. So if you're interested in being part of that ministry, please see the parish bulletin for more details. Uh, the CWL will be handing out uh, tax receipts and uh, leftover gold uh, jewelry and other items that uh, maybe the, uh, the appraiser didn't, uh, didn't accept. So they'll be over here by the table to hand them out. I, I double checked because everybody was so shocked that it was 44,000. So I said, it's not 4,400, right? It's 44,000. And yes, it is 44,000 we made from the gold rush. So uh, you can pick up your receipts there uh, by the, uh, at the foyer. And uh, last but not least, uh, you may have noticed that I did communion a little differently at the beginning. That's because we have two young people receiving their first communion today. That's Angelo and Jurgen Pelzing. Please stand, guys. <laughs> you can give me a hug after, okay? <laughs> Congrat congratulations on receiving your first communion. You're welcome. I invite everyone now to please stand for the closing prayer. Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth now in the peace of Christ. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Prayer to St. Michael. St. Michael the Archangel. <laughs> May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan, and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Thanks everyone for joining us. Wish you all a very blessed remainder of the weekend and uh, hope to see you again real soon. God bless.
边。